Welcome! Today we're gonna build an eSports gaming PC for 400 US dollars. Now the goal of this PC is to deliver as much FPS as possible on mostly lowish settings, which means that most of the stress will be on the CPU. Speaking of which, I went for an i5-10400F for this build. Normally, I like pairing these CPUs with a bit more powerful GPUs, so today I decided to go for a bit more CPU-oriented PC. For the motherboard, I wasn't too concerned about which one I was gonna use, because this CPU doesn't run too much power and pretty much any motherboard on earth can run it without a problem. So I went with this H470 from Gigabyte that I was planning on using anyway. Now, it might be a bit overkill for our system, but I think it's never a bad idea to use a decent motherboard and have a bit of upgradeability for the future. We'll be cooling this CPU with a Deepcool AG200. And since these CPU coolers come with their own thermal paste, we won't be needing to add any of our own. For the case, I went with Loving Cool LC FX, which is a budget ATX gaming case that came with Forfeit's Rainbow LED fans pre-installed. I mainly went for this case because it was cheap and it had pretty much everything that I wanted, such as big enough room to manage the few cables that we have and a decent balance between the airflow and good looks. For the storage, I decided to go for a 480x SSD from Team Group. Now, half a terabyte isn't much, but since we're building an eSports gaming PC, this much storage will be more than enough to store the majority of the eSports games. Besides, the person that we're building this PC for only plays like 2 or 3 of those games and they said that they have an additional hard drive sitting at home, so the storage won't be a problem. We'll be powering the system with a Deepcool DE600. The label on this power supply indicates that it can provide up to 450 watts, or at least 408, if we go by the amount that the 12 volt rail can provide, which is still more than enough for our system, because the CPU and the GPU combined will draw no more than 180 watts, and the rest of the components shouldn't need more than 50. For the RAM, I went with the 16GB kit from Team Group. This is a budget, but at the same time a really reliable RAM kit that I've been ordering the past few years. I've built many systems with this and not even a single one has failed, hence why I keep ordering from the same brand. As for the GPU, I'm using the RTX 3050 that I featured in one of my previous videos. I was supposed to sell a PC with this GPU, but the buyer asked me to replace it with something else, so here we are. In total, we paid around $400 for everything combined. I personally paid in a different currency, but I'll keep everything in US dollars for the sake of simplicity. Now we could have built a slightly more powerful PC if we went with used parts, but I always try to prioritize newer hardware, because if I'm giving the buyer 2 years of warranty, it is really difficult to promise that a used computer will work without a problem for 2 years straight. Besides, most people prefer NVIDIA GPUs over the AMD ones, especially in my country, so I always try to go for the hardware that sells the best, because at the end of the day, building computers is great, but you have to satisfy every single one of your customers' needs, which is why I went with these specific parts instead of some other alternatives that could have provided a bit better value. But anyhow, now that we are done building it, why don't we take it for a spin and see how it performs in games. Let's begin with CS2. We are running this game on low settings at 1080p resolution, and right off the bat we are met with hundreds of FPS. Now we could obviously run this game on the highest settings without a problem, but the point of this PC is to give us as high FPS as possible on low settings. A lot of the times in games like CS2, which is a quite CPU oriented game, it is difficult to achieve higher FPS on lower settings because these games mainly use CPU. And if we want to utilize our build for these games, we should go with the most powerful CPU that we can until we get bottlenecked by the GPU, which I think we did quite well. If this was my daily PC, I would have been pretty happy with it. On average, we got around 170 FPS. Deadlock. Currently, this game is in early access, 
It's still in beta, so a lot of things can still change. But I decided to test it regardless because a lot of people are curious about how well the game runs. For these tests, I chose the low preset at 1080p resolution without any sort of upscaling technique. And I gotta say, I wasn't expecting this much FPS. The game actually seems to be pretty easy to run. We were getting somewhere between 120 to 160 FPS. Everything is running smooth and there are no frame drops to be seen whatsoever. Now unlike CS2, this game is actually way better utilized. Even though we're playing on the lowest settings, our GPU is being fully used, which is honestly really impressive. You don't really see this too often in an FPS game. But anyhow, after playing the game for about 10 or so minutes, we got around 144 FPS on average. Doom Eternal Here I went with the low preset at 1080p resolution and jumped into my favorite fighting area. Now I know that this isn't quite an esports game, but I still wanted to test it because this game is like a way for me to compare the performance of every PC. Doom Eternal is one of the best utilized games out there, so if you wanna have a game that will be consistent every single time, you should really check it out. And speaking of consistency, look how much FPS we're getting. Nearly 200 FPS on average. The last game for today's benchmarks will be Apex Legends. Not the type of game that people play these days, but it's still a good way to benchmark our computer. In terms of graphics, I went with mostly low settings. Only a few of them were set to medium. In the air, we had around 100 FPS. But once we landed on the ground, we started getting upwards of 150. Sometimes it even went into 200s, but mostly it stayed around 180. Overall, for someone that enjoys FPS games on low settings and wants to do a bit of editing on the side, a computer like this should be a great choice. And I know that I only tested 4 games today, but I've been extremely busy these days. As much as I love recording and editing these videos, it's a lot of work, but whenever I read your comments and interact with you all, it honestly makes me really happy. So as long as you guys enjoy watching these videos, I'll keep on making them. But tell me what you think, did you like the computer that we built today? And would you change anything in it? On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.